We talk about everything Play music in between Tune in and enjoy Chad's underground scene Talk, talk and music You know what I mean Welcome to Chad's Underground Scene. We are deep, deep in the underground with Billy Caldwell. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. We're here in my CIA location and yes. deep bunker That's in right. outer Mongolia. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here, Chad. And uh, we have a little history, and then we have history before the history. So uh, before we get to our history, let's yeah. talk about the history before. Okay, so the before, before music, history. what were you into and what did you start with? I did some skateboarding. I was and, really into uh, Evil Knievel. I loved Evil Knievel. Yeah, Evil Knievel was hot, yes. You know, uh, I grew up in Las Vegas. He jumped the, the waters and crashed horribly, and I was there. I witnessed it with my eyes. I seen it. <laughs> it traumatized me as a child. I was like, oh, my God, that guy tried that on a Harley. That yeah. is so insane. On a Harley that you can hardly <laughs> jump. Can <laughs> I can't go around an exactly. oval track on a Harley. <laughs> right, crash. right, totally. <laughs> anyway, different times. So I grew up in the desert and we were bored as kids because growing up in Las Vegas at that time in the 80s, it was a completely uh, casino oriented 21 and over town. So kids just got into trouble, went to the desert, dirt ball, you know, rode dirt bikes and skateboarded. So that's what I got into with skateboarding. And um, and the punk rock scene, that's where I first got into punk, you know, because the skaters. And that was a big connection big with connection, skating yeah, and connection. punk music right exactly because i was a skater i yep. did skating yep. with uh, with my buddy corky yep. and then we actually were doing coca-cola team and did every pool exactly. around any empty pool at a hotel right we were there we yep. were all there with our friends 100 percent. and building ramps everywhere. Yeah, exactly and you just you know and that was in california you were in nevada, i was in, right? I was in yeah. nevada but we came out here all the time because i was i was a sponsored skater so we come out here for contests all the time we go to arizona um utah and uh, that was that was pretty much I thought where I was going. I thought you know at that time it was small still. I mean it wasn't like you got paid. It was just like oh you might get you know to the amateur team finally a vision or something and get you know, a, yeah you and know get it's an like, endorsement get exactly you know I got as far as like flow team stuff which was uh, great for you know a sixteen year old to be all like oh wow you just gave me like three boards I'll sell two yeah exactly <laughs> you know? and that's what we all did right yeah exactly. As and many so, wheels as you could get, exactly, and you're selling them. Exactly. <laughs> and so anyway, so I hurt myself at a contest, long story short, and, and that was the end of that. And then I uh, went to college up in uh, Reno and got into snowboarding pretty heavily, and it was an easy transition from skateboarding. Oh, yeah. And so I got sponsored doing that, and I thought that that was now going to be my new thing, because I was like, oh, this is, you know, it's snow. How am I going to hurt myself? And uh, I definitely hurt myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um... Back then, it wasn't just uh, this X Games like freestyle course. It was half pipe, which I was good at. That was like my forte. But then there was the other side of it, which was the racing. So when the racing started to happen, I did not do well with that. So uh, the racing, I uh, that wasn't so fun. Yeah, so, was different, yeah, <laughs> and I hurt myself. I had a approach, whole yeah. wild world of sports <laughs> ending to a, a race, and uh, I popped my knee out. I mean, my my hip out. And I was, I just, that was it, you know, and the doctors were like, dude, you're, you're going to end up really messed up if you don't stop. So, um, yeah. So my, my snowboarding came later. Yeah. So I, I was, I did the skateboarding yeah. and then I was playing in, uh, in a couple punk bands right, right. and then I was in Eastern right. for years. And then I was hanging out and I was in between tours and my, and my buddy goes, Hey, uh, I'm still sponsored by Sims, and they're doing this thing snowboarding now. Right. And he goes, I can get you a free snowboard. Oh, man. Because I'm sure they'll give one to you because you were sponsored. Right. I'll, they'll get you one of those snowboards sure. and check it out. So he and, so he gives me the snowboard, and he goes, and I had some buddies up at Mountain High right yeah, here yeah. in California, little resort, and I had some buddies that worked up there in the, in the pro shop, and yeah. they said, 
they said, hey, we can get you a lift ticket, come on up, and you can nice. learn that thing. We can right. show you how to do it, right? Perfect. And uh, so I spent like five days up there, yeah. staying in the, uh, we stayed in the lodge up there, where <laughs> nice. all the where all the right. uh, people that worked at the ski resort stayed. Right. And every morning, get up early and get out on that snowboard. And nice. By the end of the five days, I could snowboard pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, but the next day, I go home, and I'm going, oh my god, I've never done so many sit-ups, <laughs> push-ups, and squats in my right. entire life. Right. 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 I was I was wiped for a whole week. Oh yeah. Everything hurt. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, my first experience with snowboarding was my, my good friends in skateboarding taking me to uh, this place called Brighton up in uh, Salt Lake City area. Oh, yeah. And right, uh, yeah. the whole time up there, they're like, oh, dude, you got it, man. You know, like, you know how to skateboard, so this would be like old hat to you. And I'm like, okay, sure, yeah. So they take me up to this black diamond. I've never skied, mind you. I've never had anything to do with the mountain. So I was still just getting used to the whole, yeah, this, the angle, you know? The steepness and, the, right. and how quick you go. And dude, as soon as we got off 50. the lift, they're all gone. <laughs> gone. I'm by myself. On top of this, like, just terrifying mountain. And uh, I think it took me, like, two hours to get down the first time. I think I squatted on my butt halfway down, <laughs> screaming like a woman at some oh, yeah. point. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. sure... I'm sure it didn't look pretty, but uh, but yeah, that was my first experience. But then I got really good at it. But um, but the first experience was not, not not fun. But anyway, from there I uh, moved to L.A. and my roommates at the time were musicians. Uh, my friend Nick from Vegas, he was in a pretty popular band out there, and so he showed me some chords, which made me go, oh, I, I kind of understand this. And then my other roommate Troy, he was in a, a local band at the time, Chokebore, who ended up doing stuff and opening up for Nirvana and the whole thing. But uh, he showed me some stuff too, and then I was just like, oh, I, I think I kind of like this. And I started writing songs, and I uh, put some stuff out early, got on KXLU. Um, I was petrified, like stage fright, and so they would ask us to play. I would always refuse, or I did that for years. Like, I think they asked us like four or five times to play. We said no, because of me. I was just like petrified to do finally play. Um, and that started the music thing. I just started playing out a lot from there, and then um, yeah, I've played with a, a few people that have had that yeah. anxiety of going on stage. Oh yeah, I played for years with one, one guy, and he every time we played, he'd run to the bathroom and throw up before yeah. we played yeah. every single game. Yeah. And I just looked at him. And I'm like, dude, uh, I, Axel from the why Gears do you does do that this? quite a bit. <laughs> Axel from the Gears does it almost every show. I'm not even lying. Like it's totally like a thing. Like the last and minute like, jitters. Every time, he's like, yeah, every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's can't eat before. <laughs> Don't eat. <laughs> you might regret that. You know, so uh yeah. So uh finally I started playing out that I really started like I, I was in this band called Herculon and uh we got kind of played a lot on Cake So for a little bit of time. Uh we had this Jan Michael Vincent song that was about Jan Michael Vincent from Airwolf who ended up being the you know, he was like the hot stud in the eighties and kinda like fell down a little bit. And so we wrote this whole giant Jan Michael Vincent song and I remember that was getting played a lot and then um the band just kind of disbanded, and uh, from there, Million Kids came. I took the drummer from that band. Uh, Christian was the first, our very first drummer, and uh, and then Million Kids started there, and then we just kept going, and then stopped for a while, and then started again, and stopped, and then, and now I don't know what we are now. I have a drummer in Idaho. I'm moving to Portland in September, so <laughs> <Very nice. laughs> uh, Josh is here in LA, and. Joe, who now plays bass with us, is in you know San Pedro. So, eventually we'll play a show, I'm sure again, but I don't know when exactly. You know, so 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 we met through doing a bunch of shows together. Yeah, yeah. And that was Million Kids, yeah, right? Yeah. So tell us about Million Kids. So so Million Kids was uh, a project that started kind of uh, out of left field. I was in the, that other band, Herculine, and and things just weren't. You know, bands sometimes don't get along, guys. You know, so, you know <laughs> there's conflict. So uh, we disbanded, and uh, me and Christian continued, and we started a Million Kids. And uh, Kim Masters was the bass, and she was she was my ex. At, uh, well, she's my ex now. So but <laughs> she was my ex at the time. At right? the time, <laughs> nice. The whole time, it's just been an ex. <laughs> so anyway, no. No, she was great. Uh, she, she, and uh, I, and Christian, we played a lot of shows right around '99 to like, God, right about like 2001, 2002, and we got some interest like from the labels. We were like thinking like, oh, this might happen, and then uh, 
that whole rap rock stuff and and degent music came in and it was just so opposite of what we sounded like yeah it took it out yeah. it was like there was no way it was i knew it was it's like there's no way <laughs> they're gonna take some like kind of poppy punk stuff you know right now so um so we ended up having a kid and and uh just turned into a family for a while and uh I, we just stopped playing music and i i think i hopped into like two or three bands i was in a band called vinyl jesus for a little while and I did that with some friends, and uh, and then we got asked to play a show. Million Kids did, and that like in 2008 or something, 2007. And then we started playing again. And that's when yeah. I really started seeing started, you. Yeah. I actually played with you guys actually back in the first version. Oh yeah, first version. Yeah, a bunch of times. Yeah, a bunch right. of times. And, and actually, I think we might have even played with you in Hercules. Yes, and you're a yeah. big supporter of the underground. Yeah, man, I love the so, underground. So so tell us a little bit about you've set up a lot of shows. A lot of shows. I've oh, done that during that time, and then again, yeah. After you, you were yeah. always. Oh, I need a show called Billy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just uh, I knew that you have to have teamwork to make the dream work, as it goes, you know. And uh, when bands all kind of don't play nice and are just like, oh, this is my band. Like, I'm, I'm sure if you've played in the LA scene for a while, you've probably had one of those famous. Roxy or whiskey nights like where um, There's like 200 people for the band that's right before you and you're like, oh my god This is gonna be a great crowd. Yeah. I am oh, yeah. so stoked right now. This is gonna be a great fucking show, right? And then I'm literally on the last note of that band The entire place is empty. empty. Yeah, like within Minutes dude, and they're gone and whoever's left the band's telling them get the hell out exactly. We're exactly. meeting up the street <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> and you end up playing to like a really empty room, and it's like <laughs> if you've done the circuit It's happened to all of us, yeah. you know, it's a weird feeling and it just kind of sucks and I always hated that and um, As much as those venues are options to play There's always that vibe of like it's not like all the bands know each other where it's like a party where everyone's yeah. gonna hang out and see the other bands and so um I always just wanted to make it so that, you know, for all friends, we might as well be playing the same night, so that way, since we all kind of share the same fans, work it together so we can help it grow, and then the scene grows, it's more like people come and everybody the comes together. Exactly, yeah. it's like, it's more about the scene. So, yeah, I set up a lot of shows um, all over LA, and uh, a lot of big names and fun names, and, you know, um, I think the last big one that I did was was a scream show at the Redwood. That was a pretty yeah. epic mm -hmm. fun night. And then the uh, the Pizza Palooza stuff was fun. And I don't know. I it's it's fun doing it. Now it's like kind of weird because of the pandemic stuff. It's all like I don't know. You know, I, I saw some pictures. It's packed right now. So I'm totally stoked to see music live. You know. Yeah. But man, I just hope everything just, just stays smooth. Because man, if we go back in lockdown, we'll be so angry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was rough. Oh, it dude. was rough. That was a long it haul. It was so alien to what we're Whew. used to, right? We're. I think I know what it's like to be in a space station at this point. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know, like it was. And like, I'm, if they if yeah. they ask for volunteers, I'm not volunteering. <laughs> not at all. That sucked. You know. You mean we don't get to see people and hang out? Yeah, exactly. No, thank you. Yeah. And then you had to like turn into this virtual metaverse world which is like odd too you know and you know like everyone's doing everything it's like now i got a zoom you know everything has to be a zoom <laughs> right. and it's like jesus man like this is you know for musicians and comedians and performers in general i think it was a hard blow you know because we all know that to get a recorded sound to sound good you know like yeah. thick and like the way you want the sound it's not like a one button press, you know, it's like you right. need a pretty yeah. nice serious setup to make it sound good. And no one really has that at their house. So it's like, it's very difficult because you're trying the best you can. You know it sounds good maybe in the room, but you're like the little stupid mic on these things or, or whatever. You oh, know? right, yeah. And it drives you nuts. So even though it's, it's good, I'm glad to see live music because um, hearing a live band is by far the best feeling to feel it's the best, actual the best feeling on earth. oh yeah. man it's it just it's awesome and being with all the people hanging exactly, out and enjoying exactly. it together right is it exactly because that's more what it's about you know yeah, uh, to it's a group me. sport it, it's a group sport exactly <laughs> you know some people don't look at it that way but but yes it is a group and like sport. you said it's a team sport like you were yeah. saying it's everyone together and doing it you together. have to man yeah because yeah. I, I think if you don't do it that way it's uh, it's a hard especially in la you're going to have a hard time. <laughs> You're going to have a real hard time. So I say we break into one of your uh, Million Kids songs. Okay, let me uh, find my pick. Oh, a second. I dropped my pick. Where did my pick go? Where did I go? Here, I go in my handy-dandy wallet. 
See, this is also a thing. If you're a guitar player <laughs> like me, for some reason, picks and me are like whew, oil and water. <laughs> you put a pick in my hand, it'll disappear from my right. hand. Oh, yeah. It's almost yeah. like magic. And All they right. never come back again unless they Ever. end up in there. The full gremlin. Oh, if they end up inside. <laughs> You have to hear it forever. Yeah, it might be forever. It's in there. You might not be able to ever get it out. So anyway. So anyway, this is an old one called uh, Boom Goes Your Bomb. I'm playing it a little bit more soft than I normally do, but <coughs> let's try it. <coughs> remember that song that was yeah. awesome that was fun yeah and uh, lots of gigs oh I mean I gigs. don't think you could probably count how many gigs you played with that band oh, man. with you too and man. I can't like, count I mean, how many gigs we played you're, you're together the, yeah that's one of the only few people that I know has definitely played more gigs than me <laughs> but I play a lot of gigs man a lot of a <laughs> lot of places good places really bad places oh yeah yeah we do it all I and then sometimes the bad places are our favorite. So. Actually, they are, actually. <laughs> and actually, one of the worst experiences I had was actually my funnest, which was, uh, I can't remember the name of this bar. It was out in Pomona. And it was a castle. It looked like a castle. Maybe you guys remember what the name of that thing is. Anyway, I went on a bad night. I don't know what night we, we got booked on, but it was, not, it was not our kind of sound at all. It was uh, real heavy. First guy was batting his head with the mic bleeding. <laughs> I was like, this is some G.G. Allen shit tonight, and I don't think we match it. And so uh, <laughs> it had a, a, a gate, no joke, a real fence gate in front of the stage. And right off the bat in my head, I just instantly thought Blues Brothers, you know, I was like, that's a bad sign. Like, why is there a chain link fence in front of the damn stage. Oh, I'm right, like, yeah. And they're like, oh, it gets a little rowdy in here. And that's what the bartender said. Oh, like. right, yeah. I'm like, holy shit, dude, this is not going to be good. So we start playing. I don't think we got maybe, I don't know, 16 bars into the first song. And I hear someone just like, turn that fucking shit off. <laughs> <laughs> And I started, I giggle. I remember giggling during the song because I could hear it over the music, you know, like I was like, that was a very aggressive heckle, like very aggressive. And I look up and it's the bartender, the bartender heckled us. <laughs> and she was one of four people in the room. <laughs> That's playing music in Los Angeles, That's right. people. That's, That's awesome. how we go. Some it's nights awesome, it doesn't yeah. go that way. But I remember that so distinctly and laughing, I think, for years about it. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's worth it. Like, it's worth it just for that You have the best like, story ever, dude, right? I almost got attacked yeah. by the bartender that booked us at the show. <laughs> like, that's awesome. So, so uh, speaking of that whole situation, right, <laughs> yeah. the, the Blues Brothers. Yeah. So, 
I'm on a I'm on tour with Easter, yeah. and we we play this bar in Texas. Yeah, and it was the same type of thing. There was yeah. <laughs> chicken wire chicken in front wire of the stage, right? right? Totally right. And we're going. This is fucking crazy. <laughs> right. What the hell is? And and it was almost the same type of situation, yeah. right? We start playing, and it was a very mixed crowd of what people yeah, wanted to yeah. hear. And it literally. It went well at the beginning, and as the <laughs> set left. went on, it made a turn, and then it was like a bar fight out I in the crowd, that. and bar stools and the oh whole God. thing. Oh my gosh. The whole thing, and Corky looks at me and he goes, dude, I'll just keep hitting the snare, and you start unloading all the equipment out the back. Right, and he's playing the snare, the and we're unloading all the equipment. And he slowly out of the just walks the out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Until it was just the snare, That's and then hilarious. he just picked it up, and we ran out the door and went to our next gig. We're out of here. I love it. Ah, uh, the tour life. It's not so glamorous sometimes, people. It's so awesome. <laughs> Good memories. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so um. Yeah. So then, uh, along the way, we hung out so much and did so many things together. Mm -hmm. I, I asked you to join me because one of the one of the guys in my yeah. band, Big Mess, got injured. Yes. And I said, "Hey, uh, Billy, I know you play some drums. You yeah. think you could come and uh, and fill in for drums at this gig because yeah. our uh, right our drummer broke his ankle and he needs somebody to fill exactly. in and, and so you jumped in on drums. So I tell did. us a little bit about <laughs> that experience. Okay, so <laughs> Chad knows a lot of songs, guys. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of songs. So I play drums, but I play drums, how do I say? Um, I played in a couple bands, but you know, for me I drum, you know, it's more just to record stuff, you know, so um, he goes, yeah, you want to play this gig? It's Wednesday. Okay, I go, when's the, when's the gig? Friday. I'm like, how many songs you got? 30. I was like, what? <laughs> so, uh, I think I drove my neighbors pretty nuts for those two days, too. And I, I hammered out <laughs> those songs pretty fast and uh, showed up nervous as shit, dude, because I was like, dude, I don't know. That's 30 songs, man. And I was getting some of them confused, you know, like in my head. And so we showed up, but we had a great time. I thought that oh, yeah. was a blast. And, and I told you, I said, don't worry. When we're at the gig, we yeah, can just look exactly. at each other in the eye and figure now, it out. That's the one thing. He's great known at each keys. Other. He's great at the key. He yeah. gets, he's old school. See, back back when I started playing music, too, everything was looks, man. Like, it's, hey, hey, <laughs> we're changing. Hey. <laughs> you know, like. And we know each other yeah. so long, right? I, I knew that the connection was good yeah. enough to where we could just figure it out. Mm -hmm. And we did. We did. We played we through did. that night, and uh, we. And I don't think I think maybe we repeated a couple songs, but that was about it. That was it. it. Yeah, we pretty much did. Yeah, most and that was of only because they were requested. Yeah. People are going. We want to hear that. Yeah, one. that yeah. was really fun. That was a fun time. And so, so then we pretty much got through the night doing all yep. different songs, not without repeating, right? And, and so then I'm like, I'm like, that was totally funny, you know. And and then Bernie came back, and so th th that was good, and everything was going fine. They're playing, and then he he's like, hey, you want to play guitar? On this, yeah, like, we, yeah, we had a gig that was set up and our guitar player couldn't make it. Right? That, and, that was what it was. And so, um, I go, okay, when's the gig? It's Wednesday. She goes, it's Friday. <laughs> How many songs? Thirty. I'm like, the same thirty? No, a new thirty. <laughs> so that was my second experience. Now learning a shitload of songs on guitar very quickly. And so then we played that gig, and that was really fun too. So then I'm like, I'm like, awesome. I just learned two positions in the band <laughs> in two days, both times. And then I was like, okay, cool. I don't know, what, a month later? when, And they were like, hey, how about... How about well, then you were playing the rest of the gigs we had. You right. just sat in and yep. played with us. Right? And, then, yeah. and then you're like, hey, why don't you bring that keyboard you, you have? <laughs> here we go again. It was Wednesday. Gig on Friday. 30 songs. No, different ones. <laughs> And Christmas ones and some Irish yeah, folk yeah, ones. Yeah, it was there. Christmas time, right? Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> He's like, "Just bring the keyboard." <laughs> so I've 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 played a lot of positions in Big Mess now. That's uh, and and he lets me uh, play the bass. And then, and then finally, on, uh, yeah, we're playing a gig, and I yeah. go, "We're in the middle of this gig," and I said, "Hey, Billy, on the uh, last song, you want to play some bass?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we do uh, that Iggy Pop song. And we switched over yeah. and played. <laughs> yeah. That was fucking awesome. I want to be your dog and yeah. I, you took the bass. Exactly. Yeah. 
So uh, I touched all the bases in that band. So that <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, and then I had to add one more thing. After that, mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, uh, I get this acoustic gig. Yeah, you want to jump in and play a little guitar yeah. and bass on the yeah. acoustic gig?" Yeah. And <laughs> did that too. So we've been having some. Fun. And he goes, "Is it the same songs?" And I said, uh, "Sorry to tell you, no, <laughs> no, 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 not at all." Because there's a bunch of other songs I wrote just for acoustic. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and some people say I'm difficult when I bring them into the band and I make them learn a lot of songs. <laughs> Not at all. Just, just and, a few uh, And you find out when we play with other bands, we find out that that is true because I would say probably at least 80% of bands play the same 10 songs every time. Oh, every time. time, yeah. A lot of them do every that. Every time a they play. A lot of them do that. A lot of them do that. Yeah, it's, it's hard to mix up the variety. So apparently it's really hard to write original music. <laughs> <laughs> Because you've uh, probably written uh, hundreds of songs, too right? Too many songs, man. A lot of songs. And I definitely have written hundreds of yeah. songs, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, there's there's definitely bands that play the same ones over and over, but it's everyone has their stick, man. Everyone has their stick in this biz, you know. So, all right. So here's a one of the cover songs we did. Which one? With uh, and we'll play uh, brand new Cadillac. Yeah. How about that? Okay. Wish me luck. <laughs> Hello. Jillian Chatter back in the house. Well, feel free to throw money in the tip jar so we can give it all to the bartenders. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed the video and uh, now let's get back to one more little side project we did yeah it was a whirlwind of projects and fun shit yeah, yeah between yeah. you were playing with million kids you're playing with big mess and we were yeah. doing other projects and then my daughter says hey can you do a song for this movie that I'm making and uh, and I go sure and she goes I want you to do that song bubbles that uh, that grandpa liked and I go okay and uh, so you and I got together when we learned bubbles yeah, yeah. We learned ha uh, tiny bubbles. Tiny bubbles, right? Right. By, right, uh, by Don, Don, Ho. Don Ho. And uh, so we learned that song. Tiny and bubbles. And we practiced it, got it down, yeah. and then we came to your studio yeah. and and we recorded yeah. it. Yeah. Right. We recorded it on your home studio and it came out great. Yeah. It's friggin' awesome. Yeah. Right. We and I gave it to her, and the movie she's that she made is about her grandfather, which sure. is my father. Right. Yeah. And. Uh, so after the whole thing, she she listens to the song. She goes, "That sounds great," and everything. She goes, "But that's not the song he sings." <laughs> right. And I go, "Yeah, I know he sings that song. This is the song he way. thought he was singing, right, but right. he sings it nothing like that song." Right, right. So, <laughs> so she goes, "I kind of wanted the the one that he does." <laughs> right. So then, I got out into my room and just sat there, and I worked out a version. Of a song that sounds like the way he sang it, and it's my memory of yeah. him singing the song. Right. And uh, and I recorded this song on my latest album that'll be out this year. So uh, so um, you hardly know it. No. <laughs> you have never okay. heard. You've never heard it. So so uh, uh, 15 minutes. This is a song. Let's yes. go. I'm like so, yes. Let's so go. we're gonna jump in now. As we always did, where yeah. I said, "Let's we get a new song, jump in, let's do it." Let's do it. <laughs> and this one here is called "Bubbles." This is this was written for my daughter's movie for my daughter about my father and the way he sang "Tiny Bubbles," which is a whole different song than this one <laughs> that I wrote, which is the, actually him singing that song. I hope he puts that on the linear notes <laughs> of, the, of the album because that's the best way to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up on that. No, I should, I, I read it. I felt it. I felt it, and then I was all like, ah, "Yep, just go with it. Even yeah, if you make a mistake, okay, it's fine. Right, right, we'll do one more. Nobody's time. gonna. One more time. One more time. And here's the song. This one is uh, "Tiny Bubbles."
time I said bubbles 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 In my head Nice And a sparkle in my glass Bubbles in my head. Take it, Billy. Just learned it. <laughs> like that song. That's a good song. Right. Yes. All right, yes. Cool. Yeah. My father wrote a great song there. It's awesome. So oh, in man. the uh, credits, when it says Carrier, it's, yeah. it's my father gets Sweet. credit for writing that song. All right, so did your dad play music? Was he a musician no. as well? No. And he and he couldn't carry a note when he sang. It's awesome. <laughs> That's great, man. <laughs> it was awesome. That's cool. But he loved to sing. That was right. one of his favorite passions. Nice. When the national anthem came on, he, he was, was louder it. than anybody in the room. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Cool. So, um, 
I know uh, you have some new songs that you've been releasing in the last year, so I've seen yeah, a couple videos. Yeah, they're a little bit more and... uh, electronic kind of space stuff. It's more solo stuff. Cause I... Yeah, so tell us about it and tell us about the, yeah. the so, ins inspiration. You had some inspiration to go that way. So. Yeah, well, I, uh, I used to play around a lot, actually, with electronic music around like 2000, but I never did anything on a band-wise, you know, but uh, I, I just kind of put it on the back burner. And then um, since... You know, Million Kids is kind of like a, you know, it's more of just a random thing that will happen every now and then. I started, uh, I wanted to release an album, so I actually had, had recorded an entire album. It was like 12 songs ready to go, and uh, my computer crashed, and I lost the entire album. And so um, I got kind of bummed out, man. I was really bummed out about the whole thing, so I just didn't play music probably for about a year. And then um, I, uh, I got inspired to do a song called Circuits in My Brain, and that one got played quite a bit. That, that was doing really good. And I, I'm actually going to release that as an NFT. That's going to be my first music NFT. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so uh, people went down my rabbit hole, and they were like, oh, hey, you're a musician. They found the song, and they're like, hey, why don't you release that <laughs> song? And I was like, okay, let me try it. You know. So um, anyway, it's a little bit more electronic-based. Um, it kind of, uh, I kind of went for that old kind of early 90s kind of, trip hoppy kind of sound to it a little bit and um i, I think i'm gonna do more stuff like that you know because it kind of I, I play everything you know so I, I play drums i play keyboards you know what as yeah as chad knows <laughs> so uh i just wanted to kind of do something that i could kind of put together and then uh if i ever do it live i think i just want to get a bunch of people to do it you know like just yeah oh get yeah like a fun band that's just a you know make it more of a party you know, to have just like a, a good time going out and playing. Everyone kind of has a part and kind of does some stuff. I think that would be kind of a fun way to do it because I, uh, I saw this thing at Cafe Nella they did where they had like 50 people doing this stuff. Everyone had a part and were singing. And it was a really cool oh, experience. Sweet. I, was yeah. like, I was like, how cool, how, what a fun idea. So uh, maybe someday I'll do that. And I'll be up in uh, Portland now. So Chad, I know you go on tour. So Yeah, so when I'm up there. I have two guest rooms. You know, we'll be getting yeah. together, yeah. Welcome to stay. And then you'll time. be playing, I'm sure. Uh, there you go. You got a backup right there, man. Right? <laughs> Team Dealer recording in the garage. Right. There yeah, you go. So it's gonna be and good. then when I play some live gigs around exactly. you, I'll say, come on, Billy, get out go. there, play exactly. some guitar, man. keyboard, whatever exactly. the hell I need. Yeah, for sure. 100%. <laughs> and so, and I will probably need some keyboards because my, my new album yeah. that I've recorded is, yeah. has a lot of keyboards oh, on nice. it. Oh, nice. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Perfect. And, uh, so this would probably be a good time to break away and show your video so okay here's billy's video what's the name of it it's called circuits in my brain and it's about a uh, dystopian future where a robot realizes what he has done it's kind of like sky Knight with feelings that's kind of <laughs> that's what i'm saying it. and here you are enjoy the yeah. video <laughs> It's 
you enjoyed the video i thought it was pretty cool when i saw Thank it you. on the internet the first time yeah, i was cool. like this is bitching <laughs> <laughs> nice man cool glad you liked it yeah yeah I'd, cool well i love diversity i love it yeah. when people do something dip totally different yeah especially yeah. in the same band because it was <laughs> yeah 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 i try to change a million it up. kids right but it was so different yeah yeah well it's yeah i don't know what i'm going to call it <clears throat> you know i'm just releasing under bc right now so we'll see what happens we'll see <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. so so i got real busy during the pandemic writing songs yeah. and i actually was able to record a bunch of stuff nice and uh you i know you did some stuff during that yeah a little bit you Not, did a little, yeah a little bit i haven't um i got really into the I, i've been doing nfts I, the new nft craze i've kind of hopped in so i've been and then you were doing that. a lot of 3d printing and uh, a lot of 3d printing yeah. and, and i'm just Some printing graphic, in general i do a lot of graphic art yeah stuff, i do right? uh you know during the pandemic i was doing a lot of print on demand stuff like shirts and that kind of yeah. stuff and then uh the pandemic messed all the the supply chains up so I brought it in house, so now I can make shirts and I make mugs and all that stuff here. So I, I kind of have like a little lab in here of stuff that I do. So it's a it's yeah. A so at the end of the show, I'll probably put my order in for the mugs and whatever. Perfect. Else I need. I'll make you a mug before you leave, man. So you can walk away with a chat. There you mug. go. There, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So during so during that time, I recorded a couple albums. Yeah. That'll be out this year. Yeah. And uh, so let's do it again. This is another one you absolutely don't know. All right. So, uh, Am I going to do the drums on this one? <laughs> and I kind of wrote it about the pandemic. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, uh, the yeah throw some drums down. And okay. uh, this one's called Silence. And uh, I kind of wrote it about the pandemic. It's uh, the lyrics are a little bit uh, <coughs> intense because we had a really weird time during this pandemic. Yes. Yeah, so just go ahead and yeah. I hope you like this new angle where we get more of Billy. This one here is called Silence. Nothing is normal, everything's strange You can feel the fear, it's been rearranged No one is out there, we're all locked away Nothing to offer, nothing to say I'm having a breakdown I can't stand the silence, I can't take the pain When this is over, we need to repair All of the damage, it just isn't fair Time to recover the world has changed Time to get over No one to blame I'm having a breakdown I'm going insane Can't stand the silence I can't take the pain Ha! 
nice, Billy. Shining, let's move from here We got this together, we can stop the fear It's time to answer the voice inside Take a moment, we're by your side Nothing but silence you feel in the air Everyone is acting like they don't care Reach out and help us come in and stay Everyone together we can start a new day I'm having a breakdown There was that cue we were talking about. <laughs> so here we are. You have a big change in your life. You're going to be moving. Portland, kind of northwest. Uh, I've always like, kind of liked it up there. First, we were, um, you know, I we work remotely. And um, California is just, uh, rent's too damn high. And uh, we were having a hard time finding a house out here, to be quite honest. It's, it's, it's a hard place to, uh, the market is so um, empty right now. The inventory is so low. When you're looking for a house, it's like it's like gone in seconds. It's frustrating. You know? It's frustrating, it? you know. And so up there, we started looking around, and the kind of house you can get up there is way nicer <laughs> for the price. Oh, you know? for so, yeah, yeah. So and it's a cheaper town, and um, and it's beautiful, beautiful, it's beautiful, area. beautiful up there. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. We just went up there to visit and um, take a look at the house, and it was just, you know, it's like five miles. I mean, five minutes. It's a hike that's like unbelievable. You know, oh, like right, redwood yeah, forest. Yeah hikes everywhere so um i'm loving it and i, I like i, I kind of like the cooler weather anyway it might be a little gloomy i know it rains i know all that but i yeah i've been through a pandemic guys right. <laughs> I let you know. and, and you'll be able to carry on with the music because they have a pretty vibrant music scene yeah. as well so yeah what, what was what was really funny was that as soon as i posted hey i'm moving to portland i think uh the th thing that happened was immediately was a plethora of of uh, dms going like hey so we're going to be touring uh, in oh, October. Right, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I might be a destination stop. Who knows for my right, friends yes, that tour yeah. up there. So um, anyway, and there's plenty of places to play. I, Lots of places. I to just play up there. I was in yeah. Nashville a uh, couple months ago yeah. and playing in Nashville, and I and I met a guy there. I did yeah. the show with him. Yeah. And he, him and his buddy were from Portland. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they play a lot of shows there. Yeah, so. there's a lot of shows, a lot of street musicians up there. And then uh, you got so Seattle. So when you get up there, I'll, yeah. I'll give you his number. You can hook up. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah, because Seattle's Do also three hours together. away. So, I mean, yeah. it's a it's a pretty good, vibrant yeah. scene up there. Yeah. And uh, I think he lives about f uh, 35, 40 minutes yeah. from Portland. So yeah, yeah. He's playing there all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of stuff. There's a lot of street musicians that are really good. There was this guy that was doing this Jimi Hendrix uh, experience thing that was just awesome. And I usually don't say that because it's uh, most Jimi Hendrix experience experiences are not very good. They're not Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> this guy yeah. actually was pretty good. He was they're actually, Jerry Harris. They're not <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, it's you know it's like the other Stallone. You know, like <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, and God bless y'all, you know, it's always nice to <laughs> play those songs, but some guys So, so tell us how we can find your music and find you. Uh, go to bccaldwell.com, that has a lot of my art, and has my music links and stuff, and I'll be posting more on that soon. 
You can uh, follow me on Facebook at uh, Facebook slash, I think it's just BC Caldwell. It might just be BC. I'm not remembering. I, <laughs> see how good I am at this plug stuff? <laughs> yeah, that's and, good. So, that, and then also check out my uh, NFT things. I, I, I'm also an artist. Uh, check out morbs.app. That's M-O-R-B-S dot app. And uh, you can check out uh, my NFTs and my 3D animated series I'm making about mutant organic robots that buy shit. That's what it stands for. And so it's a little comedy kind of thing. So. And that's yet another connection, in case you didn't know, with Big Mess. Yeah. Before he played with Big Mess, he did an album cover. I did. I did. I did. Yeah. And I, it's uh, Bernie's favorite album cover. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I I, uh, I like doing the arts. That one was demons. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that one. That was a good one. That was the one with the woods, the car in the woods. Yeah, in the car yeah. in the front. Yeah, was no, awesome. that, was a, that was a good. I like that one. That was a good album. <laughs> yeah. So we'd like to thank you all for coming out thank to you guys. Uh, Chad's underground. Thank you, Chad, scene for having me with my special guest Billy yeah. Caldwell. Yeah. From Million Kids yeah. and uh, soon to be in Portland. So soon to be in Portland. So yeah, Northwest, watch <laughs> out. And remember. It all starts in the underground. That's right. We talk about everything, play music in between. Tune in and enjoy Chad's underground scene. Talk, talk and music.